here, I'm Melissa Batt, the host of Priorities on Purpose, a podcast for overwhelmed direct sellers who want to grow their income, audience, and influence without sacrificing their mental health and main priorities. Whether you're just starting a new adventure or you're 15 years in and have already climbed the ranks, I want to help you have the life and the business of your dreams. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Or maybe you thought you had it and something changed. Whether you have your entire dream mapped out or have completely given up on all the possibilities, I'm here to remind you that God is bigger than the little box we put him in. This side gig is part of his plan. It's not your sole purpose, but it absolutely has purpose. As a Christian life and business coach, I'm here to help you get out of your head and live with intention so you can enjoy what matters most without the guilt. More time to do what you love, more peace, more impact, more money, and opportunities to give to those you want to help. I promise to be your hype girl, business bestie, and biggest cheerleader as I share proven and simple strategies that will be sure to help you live a fulfilled life with a strong, sustainable business. Are you ready to stop chasing all the shiny things and get laser focused? Put your earbuds in while you're cooking dinner or folding that laundry and let's get to it, friend. This is one time when multitasking is actually going to be beneficial. Okay, we're doing this and I'm like... I've been putting this podcast episode off for at least two weeks because probably going to be one of the hardest ones I've recorded. But I think that it's going to be a good episode because it's really going to give you hope and it's going to show you how good God really is. But it's heavy. I think I'm still kind of, I've been processing and... The work that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks has been exhausting and has required a whole lot of rest. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may know that yesterday I talked about how God was showing me this difference between wallowing and resting. In the past, I've struggled with depression and anxiety, and I've been in the pit. And this is going to be a whole nother episode, I know, but You know, the pit was my bed, numbing out to anything I possibly could. I mean, sometimes it was actually working because I would overwork to numb myself out. Anything I could do to escape the feelings that I was feeling and just like shoving them down deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it got to the point that was so bad that like leaving my bed was hard. I I just watched reality TV all day long. And it's funny because another podcast episode I'm going to be doing is going to be on sober living. And sober living, it's going to be different. Like, I'm not necessarily talking about drugs and alcohol because there are a lot of things that we use to numb ourselves from the emotional pain and to escape the hurt and the trauma that we have gone through. And so, again, it's another episode that's coming. But today I'm going to tell you the story on what exactly has been going on from 2019 to 2023. We moved from South Carolina to Kentucky. And again, this was not like I didn't. God surprised me with this move. I wasn't expecting it. And... I will tell you that there was a moment, even in South Carolina, I can't believe I'm going to tell you guys this, when I was at a Bible study and those women who were at that Bible study, they will remember because we were praying at the end. I had no idea, but while I was praying and just, I mean, I was like in an intense conversation or argument with God, everyone had left. Like, no, there was no one left except for like maybe one or two people. And it was during that conversation, I don't remember all the details of it, but I know like God was showing me some things from my past, but I could not go there. Like I was like, I didn't even understand what he was showing me. I'm like, what? That doesn't even make sense. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And I wasn't ready and I couldn't do it. And so then I just, you know, kind of forgot about it because, again, it didn't make sense. And I didn't spend the time. I wasn't prepared to spend time like figuring it out. And I think God knew that he needed to take me away 
and and put me in a new environment. And sometimes that's really, really hard. So we moved to Kentucky and we moved into what I thought was my dream house. Y'all, this house was gorgeous. Curb appeal, a huge house in a neighborhood with, you know, I had doctors on both sides of me. Beautiful home. But it was a nightmare to live there for several reasons. Lots of things happened. Apparently, it was a drug house. Some well-to-do man had a mistress or something, and she lived there. And she was like, it's a whole long story. But anyways, it was a nightmare. And one of the things that had happened there that I'm pretty sure I've talked about on my podcast, I don't know that I've, I've talked about like all the details, but basically we had realized that there was someone in the neighborhood that lived really close to us attempting to do inappropriate things with my daughter. And there was about a nine year age difference. Like my daughter was probably seven or eight. And this boy was 16. And I thought I was very naive. And you can listen to another episode where I kind of talk about this because I was super naive. I thought he would just get help. I just wanted to help him because I know hurt people hurt people. But he denied it. And he didn't get the help that I know of at that time. And we ended up moving again. And when we moved again, we downsized. And the house that we currently live in, I call it the Freedom House because I just... It has been a place where I have become free and I had no idea how free I would become. I was able to resign from my 31 business because I no longer had to make the money. Like we downsized, like financially, the house is smaller. Like we basically went back to a lifestyle. Well, we tried (laughs) the house anyway. The mortgage payment was basically the what our mortgage would have been like before I became a top leader in 31 Gifts. And so I called it the Freedom House. And now as I'm telling you this, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it is truly the house where I have become free. And it's really, really cool to say that. Um, Okay, so fast forward. So that happened in 2019, 2020, before the pandemic, And again, when all of that happened in the fancy house, that's what I call it, the fancy house, like what I thought would have been my dream house that turned into my house. Like, I mean, I was in bad shape. Like I had to go to the doctor and like admit that brushing my teeth and showering was hard. Like I couldn't leave my bed and my anxiety was through the roof. And so I ended up going to therapy And it was during therapy and also I was reading a book. When you first open the page, it says something about her being molested by a cousin. And the way she described it, I was like, wait a minute. Something similar happened with one of my cousins, but I didn't think of it as sexual abuse because he was he was like five years older than me. You know, he was young. And so this led me to finally getting up the courage to talk to my therapist about it and ask some hard questions, like things I've never wanted to speak about because there was so much shame there. And so I asked her the question, like, is this normal? I had asked a couple friends that I finally got brave enough to ask, you know, I'm like, is this normal? And they all said, yeah, I didn't, you know, the same thing happened to me. Well, what I didn't realize is like, it seemed normal for them because they had been sexually abused as well. And so it actually wasn't normal, but it was normal for them and for me because that's what we knew because we had been sexually abused and, you know, it's the cycle in our families. And so anyways... That was kind of a a huge eye opener for me to realize like, oh my gosh, that's why this has affected me so much is because I'm dealing with my own trauma that I didn't even realize was trauma because it had been buried so deep. And so that was 2020, early 2020, November 2020. I finally told my mom. I hadn't told my mom because... Honestly, I felt like she couldn't handle it. 
she had her own stuff going on. And I remember reading this book. I love this book Lisa, by Lisa Whittle, Jesus Over Everything. And in one of the chapters, it was like one of those chapters that I really was like, oh, this is applicable to me. And then as I was listening, she said something really powerful and basically like, when you are saying what needs to be said because you're worried about someone else and how they will take it, like that's not up to us. That's for God. And to be honest, like I was protecting my mom. I didn't think she could handle it. And I remember thinking like, maybe this is exactly what she needs to have her own breakthrough because I'm not willing to talk about it or bring this up, and I'm trying to protect her, is actually hindering her even more. So fast forward, I tell my mom, I have conversations with my sisters because there was a lot of inappropriate things we did as kids that, again, like, I knew I didn't want my kids doing it, but there was this disconnect between, I can't even put it into words, but basically there was a disconnect between, like, what I did as a child and realizing it was wrong and like it was something we never spoke about. And I think I just pretended like it didn't happen. So I knew it was wrong. But at the same time, like I couldn't actually sit in those emotions. I had shoved them down so deep. And at the same time, though, I knew like I didn't want my kids, you know, making out with each other or doing things like that. So from there, I remember like wanting to talk to my grandma. The reason I wanted to talk to my grandma about this was because it had happened in her home. And I don't remember to this day, I don't remember a lot of the details. I just know that something happened. And like I can connect dots to figure out. But again, like I don't remember much of it. In fact, like what I remember is pornography and me walking out of the room. That's all I remember. So anyways, all of that happened. I knew I wanted to tell my grandma and, you know, COVID was happening a lot that and we ended up not being able to go for Thanksgiving to Indiana. And so by the time I got a chance to tell my grandma, I couldn't tell my grandma because she had just been diagnosed with cancer. And like it was just I knew then like it wasn't time. And so I just was like, OK, God, like if it's not time, which is funny, I'm like, it's not time. Yeah. Like you have to know that this process of me, like hard conversations with God, like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm -mm, I can't do that. I'm, you want me to talk to my grandma? No, not doing it. Like, I can't do that. Like, it would seem so much easier to do what everyone has always done and just pretend it didn't happen. But I knew that God was calling me to speak up. And I'm going to share a link to the podcast where I talk a little bit more about this, like some other things that was going on. Like I had a cousin who lost her baby because of some drugs and the drugs I knew was her way of escaping the pain. And I knew that she had been sexually abused. I didn't know, but I knew because when you've been sexually abused, I think you can recognize it in other people. And it's so funny because when I was with 31, I would do a lot of retreats. And in all of the retreats, one of the things that would come up very often is like those that were sexually abused. And again, at this time, like I didn't know I'd been sexually abused. I remember having a conversation with someone and telling them like this. I, I, I was so naive, like kind of mentioning my cousin, but being like, when I wasn't sexually abused. And now I'm like, she was probably like, mm, yes, you were. You just don't know it yet. So fast forward to this year, because again, I hadn't been able to, I never got a chance to talk to my grandma about it. She had cancer and I was like, okay, God, like you'll tell me when it's time to talk about it. And until then, I'm just going to keep on keeping on. So in February this year, you may know my, my grandma was doing really bad. I went and helped her. And I honestly thought that I was just going to be going to help my nephew while my sister did all of the taking care of my grandma. God had other plans. That's just how he got me there. And so I don't think I recognized until I got there that like 
I'm staying in the house where this abuse happened. And the reason I wasn't sharing and there was like this hold was because of my grandma. Like I wasn't, I knew God didn't want me to talk about it. Like at that time, like I just knew it wasn't that I was putting it off. It just very clearly, I know it wasn't time. So I knew that when my grandma died, it would be time. It would be time to talk about it. And so I remember thinking, okay, like she's gone. And at the same time, like the person who had abused me, like was around, they're still alive. I was still having conversations with them. This was just something that wasn't talked about. Right. And so fast forward, you know, like I recognize, I didn't know when it was going to happen, but I knew that like I had this moment where I became aware that any moment now, I'm going to like, God's going to say like, this is what we're doing. And so fast forward to June last month, and I was doing this episode for Corey Freeman, Don't Ignore the Nudge. And I'll share that link so you can listen to it. I might even ask her if she would give me permission and just like, let me upload it so you guys can have it here as well. But I remember in that episode, a deer in the headlights moment when I recognized like, oh, shoot, I wasn't planning on going there. And God's like, it's it's time. And so I talked about it and I mentioned that it was a cousin and, and blah, 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 blah. So I was in bed for probably two days after that. And you guys, God is so faithful. He is so faithful. Like he has called me to live this sober life. And again, like I didn't really like, first of all, I'm not a drinker because I know alcoholism runs in my family. And so I had very strong boundaries around alcohol, but God had showed me like little things like using Benadryl to knock myself out. That Thursday, the interview was on Wednesday, I think. Yeah. And then Thursday was the day that me and I was just struggling. And one, like I would have loved to have knocked myself out and slept it off, but I didn't because I knew that God had called me not to do that. And so that day I was like sitting by myself and I got this message from a family member and she was like, hey, are you still awake? Because I'm really struggling and I don't know, I don't know what to do or something like that. You guys, if I would have knocked myself out or taken all the Benadryl, I would not have been able to minister to her the way I, I did. This family member of mine has been called up, like is being called out in a very similar way as me. She has been sexually abused, different people, but same situation. And God is calling her to speak up and set boundaries and do hard things. And it's exhausting. And so I remember thinking that day, I'm like, I needed that. Like, it was just like extra breath in my lungs to realize that like these hard things I'm doing, they really do matter. And not just to me, but like, you know, because again, I mean, every time I, I would talk to my mom, my mom was like, why don't we just leave it in the past? Like, why do we have to keep talking about this? You know, and like, because it needs to be talked about. We cannot keep shoving this under the rug because you cannot heal from what you can't face. Okay, so... That was around the week before Father's Day, I think. Maybe two weeks before. Like, it was around the 12th. I think maybe a week. Anyways, the episode that I did with Corey was supposed to drop and be published on Father's Day. Well, Father's Day came, and I'm telling you, that whole entire week, like, I was struggling. I was struggling so hard because, like, I... Again, like I said things I didn't plan on saying. I didn't know how it came out of my mouth. Like I literally was just a vessel and whatever was said was said. And I was like, how is that going to come out? Like, what is it going to sound like? You know, and I listened to it when it first came out. And one of the things I talk about is God telling me to call my cousin, my abuser. And I had I tried. I didn't want to do it. I finally did it. He didn't answer. And from then, like, I was like, okay, like, I went through all of that for nothing. He didn't even answer the phone or text me back. 
And then when that released on Father's Day, I realized that God was calling me to reach out again. Like I just, I didn't realize it at first. It probably took me almost a week. And finally I realized like, I need to reach out to him again. And I so did not want to, because again, like we're talking hard things, right? And so I reached out to him. Finally, I like set my timer. And you guys, I want you to know, like I was in such disobedience because I knew that that God wanted me to do this. And deep down in my spirit, I think I knew that it wasn't for me. It was for him. I didn't realize that at first. I really thought it was just because this is like something that God wants me to do. And it wasn't until probably the day that I made the phone call that I realized that it wasn't for me. It was for him. God wanted me to set him free. And again, like this relative of mine was not much older than me and is five years older. Maybe he should have known better. But I know that this is a cycle and like you don't do stuff like that unless you learn how to do stuff like that. And so I I knew I didn't have any like bitterness towards him, but I still didn't want to talk about it. You know, it's like not so like, yeah, let's talk about this. To make the long story short, I finally get up the courage to pull him. I set a timer on my phone. It was like 30 minutes and then I'm going to do it. And then it went off and I just said a friend, it was like, I need to do this hard thing, you know? And she was like, okay, we'll do it. And I was like, I am, I'm doing it right now. And then I went and put on my shoes and decided like I needed to like be doing something while I made the phone calls because then like it wouldn't be as hard. I felt like, does anyone else do that? If so, let me know. So I decided to walk to my mailbox And I called and he answered on the first ring. And I I don't know that I was like fully prepared for him to actually answer the phone. I think I was like, okay, let me just do this. He's probably not even going to answer. And he answered. And I know I like kind of flubbed over my words a little bit in the beginning. It was like, hey, do you have a minute to talk? You know, I finally just kind of came out and said, so... There's something I've really been struggling with, and I just want to have a conversation about it. And, you know, I told him I felt like this was something God wanted me to talk to him about. I talked to him for one hour. He was receptive. He acknowledged it. He apologized. And he shared a little bit of his story. And he even said, like, this is something he had been wanting to talk about for a really long time but it's just something that nobody talks about in our family. And I would agree with him. Like nobody wants to talk about it, but it needs to be talked about so we can heal. And so it was a really, really good phone call. So powerful. All this time, like I was so worked up and, you know, he said like he remembers a lot more than I do because I really don't remember a whole lot of the details and he was willing to, you know, share the details if I wanted to know. I don't want to know. I'm not sure I'll ever want to know, but he said, you know, he's willing if I change my mind. But it was, y'all, it was such a good call. And I was left just in awe of how good God is. And I told him that I felt like God wanted me to have this conversation with him. And I didn't even realize this, but he's lived his life mostly in isolation. And you never know what someone's going through. You know, all this time, like, I thought he just pretended like it didn't happen also. But I think he has felt and and felt bad about it for a really, really long time. And so when I reached out, you know, and I said, like, I don't know where your relationship is with God right now. But I do know he is the reason I'm reaching out to you. And I do believe God wants me to to share this with you in order to help you become free because he was holding on to it and God wants him to let it go and stop blaming himself for it. And it was just, it was a powerful phone call. I have to tell you though, like when I got off the call, it was one hour. And the reason I know it's one hour is because my watch had tracked a workout 
not just any workout. No. It tracked a high intensity workout, an hour long workout. And that is exactly how long I've been on the phone with him. And so I don't know where this goes now from, you know, having the conversation. I haven't seen him again, but I don't feel like I don't have any bitterness. I haven't had any bitterness, actually. Like, I just feel bad because what happened to him shouldn't have happened to him. What happened to me shouldn't have happened to me. But we live in this world where bad things happen and I'm excited for God to use it and help other people. And I know that that's what he's doing. I know what it's like to carry the shame and I know what it's like to let it go and be free of it. And it feels so, so good. Now, listen, I have recognized that there is a difference between becoming free and being fully healed. I think I'm still in the healing process. I wouldn't say I'm like 100% healed. I think that's more of a process, but I am free. I am so free and it feels so good. And so I just want to challenge you. I know it's, it's hard and it's heavy. And, you know, like there's family members who didn't want me to talk about it because they felt like it was better to be just, you know, not talked about because it's in the past and it doesn't matter anymore. And it does matter because we can't heal from what we're not willing to face. And then the other thing I'm going to tell you is the testimony that has come from this, like mind blowing. And it has been hard and it's been heavy. I feel like I've said that. And again, I might be repeating some of this, definitely going to be messy, but I pray that you, you receive something for me being vulnerable in sharing this. And I pray that if there's anything that comes up that God shows you through listening to this episode, that you will talk to somebody, talk to God about it, create space to rest. I don't know if I've mentioned in the beginning of the episode or not, because my mind and my brain is just like, it's gone. But I had to carve out space to walk through this. I could not have done it if there wasn't room. I needed space in my margins. And I had created this life that will allow me to do that. I know not all of us have that opportunity right this second, but there are some things that maybe you need to let go of. There were some things I wanted to keep doing and I couldn't. I knew I had to let it go because this is bigger than me. This is bigger than my family. This is changing lives from generation to generation to generation. And not just my family, but then the women that I'm working with, it blows my mind how God knows things before. I mean, I don't know why it blows my mind, but he obviously knows things before I know them. And So I was talking to a coaching client today and had no idea that sexual abuse existed or the trauma that she has. Like She came to me for coaching for direct sales. And yet when we started talking about her blockers, I told her to pray about it and do a brain dump of all the things that's getting in her way. Like what are the blockers that's holding her back? And on that list was things like trauma, horrible relationships and feeling abandoned, really, really big things. And I was like, oh my gosh, God, I just went through this. And now I can confidently help someone else navigate their way through it because I know, I understand, and I can give them hope and show them what's possible. And that feels really, really good. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. It's an intense one, but I just hope you see God in it and know that he loves you and 
he's there. He's wanting you to surrender and give some of these things up because when you're suppressing it, you can't face it. And how can he heal you or help you overcome it if you're never willing to face it? So that's it for this episode. Bye now. Hey friend, that's it for this episode. If you found value, I would love it if you could take a couple of seconds and leave me a quick review. While it may seem super simple, it is so beneficial and gives me the opportunity to help more women. Also take a screenshot and share it on social media with your biggest aha today. Don't forget to tag me at Melissa Bad Official so we can connect. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, friend, keep walking it out one baby step at a time because God's got you.